Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're looking at the Backman LMS 10001, also known as the British Rail D16 class. This is Backman Reference 31-998 and it came out in 2020. It's got a recommended retail price of just under £184, but I got this from Tenants Trains for just over £157. Now I wouldn't normally be interested in diesels wearing British Rail livery, but this isn't your average British Rail diesel. So before we open it up and take a look at the model, let's start with a quick bit of history to find out what makes this locomotive so special. The British Railways D16 class was made up of two locomotives, numbers 10,000 and 10,001, and they were built by the LMS in collaboration with English Electric. These were really important locomotives because they were the first mainline diesels manufactured in the UK. Number 10,000 went into service wearing LMS livery only three weeks before nationalisation. 10,001 followed in 1948 being delivered in the British Railways livery, and this is the model we'll be looking at. The locomotives were primarily designed to operate express passenger services such as the Royal Scot, but they often found themselves hauling freight in winter due to boiler issues leaving them unable to provide carriage heating. Frequently they could be seen running together and double heading trains, but from 1949 onwards they also operated individually. Both locomotives lived short lives, 10,000 was withdrawn in 1963 and 10,001 in 1966. Sadly, despite being such historically important locomotives, neither was preserved. There are some really good videos on YouTube that show the construction of these locomotives and the launch of 10,000, so I'll put links to those in the description below. So that's a bit of history on the real thing, let's take a look at the model. So here we are in the standard Backman branch line packaging and I really like this because you've got the window at the front and I can already see that the model is looking pretty great inside with the black and the chrome. But let's take a quick look at the end of the box. Uh, you've got the Backman reference there, 31998, the description, LMS 10001, British Railways, black and chrome, early emblem. And it's telling you here that it takes a 21 pin DCC decoder. So it will come ready to run on analog, but I've got a 21 pin decoder from Hattons that I plan to put in here so I can run it on digital. Then on the back here, we've got some historical information. That's mostly the stuff that we've been through. Feel free to have a pause and a read through that if you want to, but let's get this open and take a look inside. That just slides off and then we can tip this out. And I think we've got some documents here at the back. So let's take a quick look at those. We've got the standard product care and maintenance information here, a bit about lubrication, the warranty stuff on the back, and then inside got the Batman Collectors Club and a bit more about the warranty. So put that down there. And then we've got the specific sheet for the locomotive. So we've got stuff about the body removal, the DCC decoder fitting, um, some something about the lights. So it looks like we've got directional and tail lights and cab lights in here. And then it looks like there's some switches on the bottom, I think, that can turn the um, switch between passenger and freight settings and also turn the tail lights on and off. On the other side, we've got an exploded diagram of the locomotive showing all the parts. We've got the motor with the double flywheel in there. So let's put that to one side. And let's get this open. Slide this out. Uh, on top here, you can see we've got a details pack. So it looks like there's a couple of. Let's take this off. Let's see if we can. We've got the Royal Scott headboard there, and it looks like some bits and pieces to attach to the buffers. So some couplings and a bit of pipe work. So that's nice that you can turn it into the Royal Scott service. And let's get this opened up. So here we are. Gently lift this out. Put that to one side. And 
isn't she magnificent? Um, I'm already pretty impressed with that. It's a good weighty model and it's got a very American look about it, I think. Um, and I can see there's a cab. Uh, we've got a driver in there and I think also, yep, we've got uh, probably not a fireman, but a, a second man. Um, so what I'll do is take some photos of this and we'll have a closer look. 10001 comes in the stylish black and chrome livery with the early British Railways emblem on either side. We've got the running number on both sides of the cabs and we've also got a builder's plate. The printing is incredibly fine but you can read it and it says that it was manufactured in Derby by British Railways and the English Electric Company. There's quite a bit of detail on the model with a combination of moulded features and separately fitted parts. Starting with the moulded features we've got the panelling on the roof, the vents on the sides and the various handles and steps as well as plenty of riveting. But it's the moulding on the bogies that's most notable. There's plenty of detail there and because it's in the chrome it really stands out. Plus the black axle boxes set into the chrome even have LMS moulded onto them which is a really nice touch. In terms of separately fitted parts on the bogies we've got some ladders and sanding pipes. Then on the body there are the cab railings and lamp brackets. And on top we've got these horns at either end which I really like. And then there's the fan which is set behind the grating. It doesn't spin but it looks pretty good. Whilst filming this I noticed that I'm missing a lamp bracket and I couldn't find it in the box. This was my first opportunity to try out Backman's customer services and they didn't disappoint. I had a new lamp bracket through the post two days after contacting them. At either end we've got narrow NEM couplings and metal buffers but they're not sprung. Also at the ends we've got these moulded doors that I really like and around those we've got the lighting which we'll take a look at later. Then we've got the cab areas which have seats and some moulded controls, plus at one end we have a two-man crew which is great because it would have been a real shame to have cab lighting and not have a crew fitted. Around the cabs we've got the glazing and there are also some tiny windscreen wipers. We've also got glazing panels down the sides but there's no interior worth talking about there. The model has good weight to it which comes from the inner structure and I think most of the bodywork and the bogies are plastic. Both bogies are driven by a central motor with two flywheels which should help to smooth out the running. And we've got axle pickups on all 12 wheels which should mean no connection issues. Also underneath we've got two lighting switches, one to switch between freight and passenger configurations and one to turn the tail lights on and off. I think this model looks fantastic but does it have the performance to match its looks? There's no point in putting this on the rolling road because we won't see anything so I'll drop it onto the layout and we can see how it runs. Here we are on the layout, let's turn it up and see it pull away. Okay, so that's nice, accelerating, decelerating smoothly, let's take it back. Yeah, that's really nice, let's see if it can crawl now. Um, okay, so that wasn't a stall, that was me turning the controller down to the point where the motor cut out, but it's not the slowest crawl in the world, but it's good enough, it cuts out towards the bottom of the um, controller range. Smooth acceleration and deceleration, obviously you can change that using your CV settings on your decoder if you're running this on DCC. Let's take a look at the lighting. We've got headlights and cab lights on here, switch to tail lights and we can turn those off independently and we can turn the cab light off independently as well. So I'm really pleased with how it runs and I really like the lighting. So, overall, what do we think of the Backman 10001 in the British Railways livery? Well, personally, I love it. It's such a historically important locomotive, representing the start of UK manufactured mainline diesels. I like that it's got that link to the LMS, and in all the black and chrome, it's just a really stylish locomotive. Also, the performance is excellent. It's got all the lighting, and it's got that crew fitted, so there's not much more you could really ask for. Okay, it wasn't a cheap model, but I think on this occasion, it represents pretty good value. These sold out quite quickly after they were released, but they do come up occasionally secondhand on the auction sites. And given the value they're being listed for, I think these are only going to appreciate in value. As I said earlier, sadly, neither of the locomotives made it into preservation. However, the IVAT Diesel Recreation Society have recently announced that they're planning on recreating number 10,000. And for this, they're using the chassis of a Class 58. I think they've still got a fair amount of work to do, but I can't wait to see the finished product. I'll put a link to the society in the description below so you can check out their progress and donate to the project if you'd like to.
If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notifications bell so YouTube will let you know when new videos come out in future. As usual, I'll leave you with some shots of 10,001 running around Little Wicket. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.